Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma Talk is given by Robert Coho Epstein. So, um, in the Anatta Lakana Sutta, the Buddha discusses the nature of experience through what is called the analysis of the five skandhas. One of my favorite subjects, uh, I may have uh, talked about it before, but it's uh, endlessly uh, interesting and significant. Uh, the skandhas are, the sk- skanda is the Sanskrit word for the Pali uh, word that he used at the time, kanda, so very close, um, and stands for the five aggregates, uh, which can be understood as the elements of experiencing. That's my uh, turn of phrase, um, because it can be rather confusing. They're the five elements, not in the sense of uh, earth elements and that kind of thing, but in, in terms of being components. So they're the five components that uh, make experience possible. And um, they include form, which is the most basic, uh, rupa in Pali or Sanskrit. And that represents the physical body and the material world that we're a part of. Feeling or vedna, uh, which is basic sensation and uh, perception or samnya, uh, which is obviously using the senses uh, to take in um, sensory objects. Mental formations, which might be the most interesting of the skandhas, uh, Shankara, and um, consciousness or vijnana. Uh, These five elements are, in other words, the component parts of experiencing, uh, according to the Buddha's analysis, that allow us to exist as living, experiencing beings, as opposed to being uh, rocks or uh, something that doesn't experience anything. So form is your experience of the body. Uh, In my sense of it, it includes your uh, experiencing yourself as part of the physical world, uh, physical object among objects, although your body can feel and rocks ostensibly cannot, you feel your own body, which allows you to identify yourself as a physical organism that moves around and does things and to experience physical objects. And that's part of the sense that we have of being a separate being is that we're identified as a physical uh, organism. So, uh, you feel like a, a body in the physical world of form. Feeling, the second skanda, includes all of your physical sensations, including your experience of internal feelings, which you could say are the concrete or physical aspect or root of simple emotions in the form of pleasurable or painful or unpleasant sensations. And the Buddha identified this, that every sensation is either pleasant or unpleasant or more confusingly neutral, which I won't go into because it confuses everybody, uh, having neutral feelings. Um, So usually if you feel pleasant sensations that feel good, you develop corresponding good mood. And if you're stuck in mud with smelly swamp water permeating your shoes and clothing, and that doesn't feel very pleasant at all, you will get in a bad mood. That's if you haven't practiced uh, properly for a really long time. You may also be getting the idea that these elements of experience overlap and to an extent they do. These basic sensations that are pleasant or unpleasant give us like a root feeling or root emotion. Um, And, uh, you know, form is physicality, but of course you know that you you have a body through sensation. So the feeling uh, component overlaps with the, with the rupa, the form component, um, for living beings anyway. 
So the next skanda or element of experience is perception. And that includes your perception of the body. So it kind of overlaps sensation again. And also uh, things close to you, but it extends out from the body into the world through seeing and hearing and gives you a sense of a perceptual world that's bigger than just your body, which amoebas don't have. They're just in their immediate space. Um, and that includes all of the five senses and their objects. In addition to creating a physical perception of an object, perception can also identify and label it. So there's an overlap there too, because perception has this basic mental ability to see what the object is, not just have an image of it like a camera. You can also see that as we go along from simple form to sensation to perception, um, we're increasing in complexity and our range of experience is expanding. First, there's just the body and the physical world. Then there are sensations. Then there are extended perceptions that go beyond that. And as you can guess, the next skanda or element of experience will be even more complicated. And that is mental formations. Very exciting because with mental formations, we are able to build on our sensory and perceptual experience and start thinking about it, as well as developing more complex emotional states. This fourth skanda is really great in that sense because it allows us to increase our suffering exponentially through thought alone, generating thoughts and emotions that don't necessarily have anything to do with reality. So now instead of just feeling the unpleasant mud seeping through our shoes and putting us in a bad mood, we can start complaining to ourselves about it and extend and intensify the nastiness of our feeling about it. Why am I, of all people, stuck in the mud? Why did this happen to me? I'm obviously being attacked by evil spirits. And actually, it's my fault because I did three bad things this week. I killed a mosquito. I ate too many cookies. And I was mean to my neighbor. So I obviously deserve this. It's obviously bad karma. Not only do I feel bad about the mud, but I hate myself and I hate everyone else as well for punishing me. That's kind of an extreme proliferation. But this kind of proliferation, starting with uh, perception of something unpleasant and then snowballing uh, into something much larger and uh, more dire or more intense is very common. I'm sure we've all experienced it, if not regularly, hopefully not sometimes. Um, so this kind of proliferating snowballing thought process along with the negative emotions it generates contributes nothing of value to our experience or our ability to get out of the mud, but it does intensify and extend our suffering. It's in this area of mental formations or proliferations that we hold, extend, and develop painful delusions. Somebody gives you a, a look, you decide that it's a, a, a mean look, they obviously don't like you, and you keep on thinking from there, then when you relate to them, you're defensive, they think you don't like them, and on and on through delusory interpretations of what we experience. And a lot of the suffering of our lives is based on that kind of uh, misinterpretation through the fourth skanda. Um, Buddha described what I believe corresponds to this level of the uh, components of experience, uh, uh, described it as being a second arrow in the parable of the two darts of the two arrows, where we have some unpleasant thing happen to us and we make it worse through shooting ourselves with a second arrow that's made of our own thought and emotion, our own reactivity. And hopefully this uh, can be seen for what it is and we can get a little bit of distance from it through our practice. Um, because sitting and observing sensations and thoughts allows us to hopefully be a little more mindful of what their nature is and that they don't necessarily correspond to reality. Um, so much of the mischief in our lives, if not all of it, is created in this fourth scandal, leaving aside, you know, getting hit by a, a piano or whatever that comes rolling down the street. 
Um, this fourth scanda of mental and emotional formations with its complex thoughts, beliefs, and emotions that we build and hold on to, uh, or to use the Buddha's words, cling to, creates a lot of the mischief and suffering in our lives. And uh, Buddha described the skandhas, in fact, and the way that they cause suffering as the clinging uh, skandhas, the clinging components of experience. And it's because of the clinging to them and holding on to uh, what we think uh, these experiences mean about us as separate beings, separate selves, um, that causes the suffering. If we just experienced the unpleasant mud and left it at that, it would be unpleasant for a little while, but when it was over, it would be finished. But with mental formations, we can keep it going forever. Um, and we have similar thoughts about many of our relationships and past events that keep trauma and unhappiness alive in our minds and emotions. And many of these delusory thoughts support the false notion of a separate self because they're all about how something from outside happened to me. And I keep on thinking about how that applies to me, my well being, my survival. Um, my status, et cetera, et cetera, as, as a self. Um, so it feeds the idea that we're separate and apart from, from others as we have these reactions. And finally, uh, after all that mischief of the fourth skanda, we finally have the fifth skanda, the star of the show that makes everything else possible, consciousness. Uh, Buddhism has about 2 billion different words for different types and functions of consciousness. But this one, Vijnana, is merely the nice, clear mental function that allows us to experience and register whatever we experience. This consciousness just arises to take in whatever object we're perceiving or feeling. And it doesn't have any reaction to it. It's simply the clear uh, window. Uh, by which it's seen and experienced. Um, and there's hearing consciousness for sound, seeing consciousness for sight, etc. If we have a, a visual object or, or an audible object. It's the basic sentient component of mind that Buddha addresses when he speaks of sentient beings, the living beings that his teaching is directed towards. Without consciousness, we wouldn't experience anything at all. And Buddha could have spent his 40 years of teaching just relaxing and drinking herbal cocktails uh, once he was awakened. But because of uh, our ability to experience and our mental and emotional delusions, uh, he compassionately continued to talk and teach for that entire time. Of course, in Buddhism, things are always a little more complex than they appear, and there's always a list involved. So as Peter Harvey uh, puts it, defining vijnana or experiencing consciousness, he says awareness, it, it's, it's defined as awareness of an object and discrimination of its components and aspects and is of six types. Okay, six types. But the six types just correspond to the five senses um, and the awareness of each of those sensory objects. And the sixth one is our mental consciousness or awareness of thought. And, uh, and mental operations. So that's more or less a fairly crude introduction to the skandhas, the five elements that make human experience take place. And when we cling to the objects of our experience and the results of the skandhic activity, we suffer. That causes dukkha. Animals are a little happier than we are because they don't have much happening in the mental formation department that fourth skanda. They don't generate extended delusional thoughts about things that are no longer taking place. Uh, they don't think about the other dog that they had a, a barking encounter with and think, God, that dog really didn't like me. What am I gonna do the next time I see him? They just drop it once it's over. Uh, they just respond and have simple mental formations that match the moment and what they may need to do. But we're stuck with this great capacity and also burden of endless analysis and proliferation. And so we can not only have an idea of personal self that we build and cherish, but constantly formulate new and revisit old 
ideas about what we need to do to protect or promote ourselves. It's very exhausting, mentally speaking. Through our practice, hopefully we can reduce this a bit and get a bit less delusional as well. And if we're able to notice that we're generating thought upon thought, feeling upon feeling, we may be able to use mindful awareness to take a step back and realize that these are just thoughts, uh, these are just feelings, they don't represent a reality that um, beyond themselves necessarily. That's a great thing to do and meditation practice increases the ability to be mindful and to take that step back to look at and observe the formation of our feelings, perceptions, uh, thoughts and emotions and see that they are just something that's taking place um, in our experience uh, rather than representing reality. Thanks.